The Quiver of Arrows is the program we use to teach literature and the mechanics of writing to some of your youngest students, kids who are just beginning to read, they're just starting to handwrite. And what we love about the Quiver of Arrows is that it uses the strategies of our very popular arrow program and it reduces the volume required from your kids to be able to copy, to do dictation. The kind of reading that you will be doing to them is simpler and easier. So the Quiver is designed to help you be effective with those youngest kids in the areas of reading and the mechanics of writing. Here's what's great. Last year in the Arrow, we took it through a redesign. We helped the Arrow become, you know, a little more grown up in the last two years, just the look of it. The Quiver had been created before that time occurred and literally Brave Writer has so much going all the time. We didn't have time to get around to redesigning the Arrow, uh, the Quiver of Arrows. And that's when we realized, hey, we've got an opportunity. If we're gonna go through all the work of redesigning the look, what if we upgrade the content? Well, you probably already know where I'm going with this. Mary Wilson, who now works with Brave Writer, is a fabulous party planner. For those of you who don't know, check out her blog, notbefore7.com. She is the sage behind what it means to have great book clubs. And so we tapped Mary to do for the Quiver of Arrows what she had already done for the arrow, which was to design a book club party guide for each one of our new quivers. Well, the same old quivers, but new design. Okay, so hello, hello, hello. I see all of you coming in. I see you saying hi. I don't want to ignore you, but I feel like it's important to launch right into the content when you are giving me your time right in the middle of a hot summer day when, as Chantel said, she's at a pool where kids are splashing. <laughs> I totally get it. What I am excited about about this quiver of arrows is that I feel like this is the age group where you're wanting to start to do real writing. You want your kids to start to be able to use the pencil, you know, they're, they're actually able to write, but you want to give them a gentle introduction. You don't want them overwhelmed by like a ton of text on a page. So what I've done is I have printed a complete copy of the quiver. So first I want to show you Here's our brand new logo, that cute little blue, well, almost looks like a, a flamethrower, but it's really, it's a quiver with arrows. And it's in the same look as the old arrow, the, the standard arrow, excuse me. Um, somebody's asking if we'll be new, doing new book titles. Uh, we will, but it won't be this year. It might be in the future year. Lindsay, for those of you who can't get all the book titles in the UK, just do the ones where you can. A lot of our, uh, every single one of these issues is available to you on um, the single issues page of the store. So if you go to store.bravewriter.com, you will see Arrow Single Issues, and you should be able to use that to just purchase the ones where you can find the books. So let's say there are six out of the 10. Believe me, six quiver arrows is gonna last you most of the year. For some families, this takes two years because your kids are young and you don't need to move at this breakneck pace, right? We're just moseying along. So the one that I picked today to look at is Mr. Popper's Penguins. How many of you love that book? It's so delightful. 37 pages <laughs> of information, of inspiration for using this book. That is a significant number. When I first started designing the arrow, they were like five to eight pages. So you just need to know, this is kind of an incredible uh, package of information for only $11.95, which I think is an absolute freaking bargain if you even knew how much work it takes to write them, to design them, to read the books, to play in the parties, to add the writing activities. I mean, seriously, ridiculous. So where were we? Let's start over because this is important. This is the cover page. We're looking at Mr. Popper's Penguins. There are 10 books for the Quiver of Arrows. So if you buy the whole program at once, you'll get 10 almost 40 page documents. Huh? And you'll get them all at once because they're all done. So on page two, 
what we did is we had customers say, can you just give me an overview of all the stuff that's in one of your arrows so I feel content and comfortable? And I was like, we can do that. So, but we don't like scope and sequence. We hate those words. So one of our staff members came up with this brilliant idea. We call it the Brave Writer Spin and Spiral because we like to spin through the literary devices and grammar terms and punctuation and, and uh, spelling stuff. And we, we think of it as a spiral. You're constantly layering. We're not just linear going up a stairwell, okay? So here's the spin and spiral. And I'm gonna read you some of these because I think it'll be fun for you to get a sense of what we mean by spin and spiral. Maybe you've heard the educationalese term scope and sequence. Here's our version. The Brave Writer Spin and Spiral, terms and skills to visit and revisit. In this issue of The Arrow, we'll take a closer look at the its and its conundrum. We'll bracket information with commas. We'll pause a list with an ellipsis. We'll learn how the article A refers to one item. We'll examine when to add an E before an S when making a pure plural. We'll investigate why a Y would turn into an I when there's more than one. We'll puzzle over how why could be at the beginning of a statement, not a question. We'll see how yes could begin a question. We'll relish in a satisfying conclusion and we'll tap into emotions through feeling words. So that gives you a sense of the things you'll discover when you're inside this product, okay? So week one is going to feature a passage near the beginning of the quiver, of the book, excuse me. And the reason we do that is we want you to be able to read the books aloud to your kids and not spoil any of the plot by reading a passage that comes out of sequence. So people ask me all the time, how many pages should I read? Well, I don't know. Every family is different. The pace of your family is different. I refuse to determine how many pages you should read just so you'll feel guilty about it when you don't keep up with some arbitrary schedule I made up. But what you can do is you can look at the passages we've picked for week one, week two, week three, week four, and just make sure that you have read past that passage before you introduce it in copy work. So that might give you a goal. So in week one, it's usually the beginning of the book. And we like to give you a page that you can simply print that has the passage available for your student to use. Nothing else on the page, just that passage. And in the quiver, we use a font that resembles the letters your kids are handwriting. I'm looking for a G, I don't see one. But the point is, all of our letters look like the ones they're gonna handwrite. You know how sometimes a font looks weird, they have that weird G? We don't do that, or the weird Q. We are trying to use the actual shape your kids are gonna be writing. At first and second grade, that's really important. The font is also a little bigger than what they would read in a book, so it makes it easier for them to copy. So, this is week one's passage. Then, we give notes to you so that you can teach about the passage. And this, this passage is to be used for copy work and dictation. I'll explain more about that in a minute. So when we're giving you notes, we go ahead and we repeat the passage, and then we explain why we chose it. For instance, this one says, this passage is flush left because we are using sentences already a part of an existing paragraph. The reception of the penguin by crate is the key to the entire storyline. The beginning of the paragraph reads, and then we show it. Your children will write the two sentences in the copywork passage, but the notes will address the entire paragraph. And then it goes on, what to note. And it explains such a delightful development, penguins as pets. The passage gives you a chance to look at the word its. One of the most common errors in writing made by native speakers is to misunderstand its. Its and its, with an apostrophe, do not represent the same meanings. Then we give you some examples of the difference between a contraction and the possessive in this case. So we explain what to note, then we build from there and talk about how to teach the passage. 
Skill building for budding geniuses. Try your hand at differentiating between the its and its. And we give you some suggestions and some sentences to test out your skill building. And then we suggest what you can do sometimes on each day of the week, but not always. In my view, not every passage merits daily investigation. And in fact, if you see a gap in days, it's because I love you. Don't write us and say, what happened to Tuesday and Wednesday? It means, phew, you get a break. Okay. <laughs> so we have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just to give you a suggested frame of reference, if you want, for what you can do. For most young children, these passages might take a week to copy. We aren't expecting your child of eight years old who's new to reading and handwriting to sit down and copy three sentences all in one sitting. Now, some of you have kids for whom that would be a simple task, but I don't know about you, I had a lot of kids who didn't find that easy and they needed to just copy a few words a day and chug away at it over time. We make space for that in your life. We expect that with your kids. So that's how the arrow is built. And then something that we do only in the quiver of arrows, no other product has it, we offer you a suggested French style dictation page. Now what is French style dictation, you ask? Well, it is the practice I learned in France for making dictation less challenging for readers. In fact, one of my good friends who lived next door, uh, she was from France and her kids had to do American school during the day. And then after school, she had her entire French program that they had to keep up with so that when they returned to France, they were allowed to continue at the same grades. Can you imagine? I mean, those poor kids were doing school all day long. Anyway, I asked her if I could see their spelling book and she said, we don't have one. I said, well, how do you teach spelling? She said, dictation. I said, ah, oh, I remember doing dictation in France in college. They made us do it there. I did not know this was a lifelong practice for kids. She says, oh yeah, here's the book. So I looked and the first day they give you a passage to copy. Then the teacher teaches the passage. Then two or three days later, they give you a passage like this with blanks for some of the words and some of the punctuation marks. And the teacher reads the passage while the child is filling in the blanks. So they're listening just like they would do in dictation, but they're only responsible for a portion of what that passage is. In other words, it doesn't put the complete burden of dictation on them when they're too young to handle it, but it trains them in the dictation practice. Make sense? So you'll have these blanks, your child is listening for the word and then filling them in. Make sense? So that's what French style dictation is. And we provide a page like that in the quiver. We do not in the arrow and here's why. I want you to make your own. Your kids by the arrow level have more and more specific needs. You use French style dictation to target those needs in your child. So if you have a child who struggles with the spelling of because, then when you have a passage that includes that word, you get to eliminate that word for the French style dictation. But if your child's already good at because, my leaving it blank isn't gonna help that child grow. So you need to be attentive to who your kid is and then create a French style dictation from the passage that suits the skill level of your child. Make sense? Kids at this level, at the quiver level, are still so young that I wanna get that practice going. I don't want parents to not do it just because it seems like it takes more work. And I wanted to model it for you. So the quiver is fabulous for having this already provided if that's something that you are interested in. Rebecca asked, what does that kind of dictation? Oh, we do that kind of dictation in my adult ESL classes. It's nice to know it works with kids. Oh my gosh, it works brilliantly with kids. I used it for all my children their whole lives really, essentially. Um, we have another style of dictation that we teach. We don't always include it in a quiver or an arrow. Occasionally we do. It's called reverse dictation. That's just a name I made up. What I do is I put the entire passage on a page. We, I make it devoid of all capitals and punctuation. There are no paragraph markers. And then we deliberately misspell some of the words, print it out, hand it to the child to edit with a red pen 
or a pencil, whatever they want to use, and they make it better. That's what they do after they've engaged the passage through copywork, traditional dictation, have read it in the book, just as a chance to show off, to be in power over the passage rather than the passage being in power over the child. Does that make sense? So we teach copywork, dictation, French style dictation, and reverse dictation in the Quiver guidelines. So if you purchase the set or even an individual issue, you will automatically also receive guidelines that tell you how to apply those skills to the tools, okay? So if you're wondering, I won't remember all this, you don't need to, we've already written it for you and it exists in that part of the guide. So make sure you download everything and read it. Don't just open the, you know, Mr. Popper's Penguins and wonder what to do. So the, it, the quiver continues the same way. Week two is very similar to week one, just so you can see. And this is how they all look. There's a lot of writing, but there's also, fortunately, you know, some visual relief depending on the week, like this. And very simple, doesn't cost a lot. There you go. So here's another French style dictation. So does that give you a clue? All right, so now we're done with the basic part of all of our arrows, quiver and otherwise. The next feature, which I absolutely love, for me, it's my favorite feature of the arrow. I was so committed to this idea when I first began. I am tired of the entire focus of teaching writing, being on punctuation and spelling accuracy, as if that's why we read books. I mean, when was the last time you read a book and said, brilliant comma use, love all those capitals? That is not why we read. Yes, we want our kids to be skillful in mechanics, but what about inspiring them to be better writers, to be the kind of people who can access the language within and generate insightful creative prose? How do we get that? And you know, reading aloud is one of the key ways of doing that. But we also want to highlight the craft of writing, the literary devices that the author is using to create the magic. And we can do that in such a delight-based way with our students. So for instance, in Mr. Popper's Penguins, there is a lot of focus on emotion. So for these youngsters, these little first and second graders, we're not gonna talk about, you know, the power of the appositive or something. We're gonna focus on feeling words and what it means to write in a way that communicates. My um, phone keeps going off, I'm so sorry. Uh, we're gonna write about these different emotions. Do you see that? Perfect. So the, the literary device every month varies. Sometimes it's focused on alliteration. Sometimes it's focused on powerful verbs. But each month we pick one of the devices that we think is well featured inside the book and then we explicate it to you. And then we create a writing activity based on the uh, based on the literary element. So in this case, I'm talking about ways to make the happy words, the emotional words show up for your child. So we talk about creating a collage or a puppet, ways to use a variety of language, variety of words, vocabulary, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> variety of vocabulary to represent emotion. Got it? Yeah. Now for the coup de gras, the best part of the entire redesign. Are you ready? What we call Book Club Party School by Mary Wilson. Mary is that intrepid party planner. You can't keep a good planning party woman down, apparently. And so what she does is she creates a guide every time. And they're so good. They're written in this very friendly way. What, what, what on earth? Why is there a group of penguins at my front door? And this is her welcoming the partiers to the house for the book club. Admiral Drink sent you from the South Pole. You just arrived on the Air Express. Well, I'll be. How wonderful of him to think of me and my love for penguins. Of course, I wasn't expecting your arrival. I wonder what my wife will say. Oh, forgive my manners. You must be melting the heat in the heat outside. Waddle in, waddle in. We'll make you an ice cold bath to enjoy. Welcome to Stillwater. 
Welcome your guests with a sign that reads, Welcome to 432 Proud Foot Avenue. Decorate your meeting area with pictures of penguins, the South Pole, and Arctic explorers. She goes on and talks about how to create a black and white theme that looks like the Arctic. She's got things like serving red Swedish fish and goldfish crackers uh, in blue paper, pa blue paper bowls or using blue jello. Then she has all kinds of games. Penguin performers create a piece of penguin footprint art. And she explains in detail, for instance, you will need washable tempera paint, white construction paper, large googly eyes, and have a hose or bucket of water soap and towels handy. Right? This is what these book club guides include. And then she shows you what to do before the book club, what to do during the book club. So it's all very clear. Uh, she talks about having a snowball fight and what else to do when you are spending time together, like even watching the movie. In other words, she goes from just giving you a list, like some kind of, you know, uh, page of ideas that you have to flesh out. And she tells you what to buy, how to prepare, even kind of the spirit of and language of while you're in it. Mary is wonderful and we have discovered that one of the best ways to create community in your homeschool is to invite families over for book club parties. It changes everything. Your kids become interested in each other. They want to read the book and you develop community for yourself because you and your friends are all doing the same thing. Do you see what I'm saying? You're all reading the same book. You're all looking forward to these parties. Now, I will give you a hot tip based on my own experience as a home educating mother. I was in a group of five homeschool families back when I first started. We did not have Mary, but we had parties. We were into parties. Parties have been a big part of my homeschool the whole way through. And what we would do is, we knew we had 10 months and there were five families. So each family was responsible for two parties and we would discuss these party plans, you know, over brunch at Mimi's because that's what you have to do, right? Just tell your spouses, I'm sorry, I have to meet with my girls at Mimi's and we're gonna discuss homeschool. <laughs> and then do it. Go out, build this little community for yourself and just, you know, disperse the burden. Don't let it all just rest on your shoulders for your children for the whole year, you'll burn out but you could absolutely create this community for yourself where everybody is planning together. Now, like I said, there is a book club party guide in every single issue now of the Quiver of Arrows. And here's what's so much fun. Even if you're not up for having families over and it feels like too much work to do a big party, you could have a poetry tea time, a little book club tea time with your own kids and just do one or two of the ideas. The snack foods alone are enough for you to read aloud, pour tea, and have what feels like poetry tea time, but it's just your own family book club party time, right? So these activities work really well, almost like a unit study. Uh, some of them are just so delightful, you will just feel like you're throwing a birthday party every month, you know, which is incredible. Some of them are, especially as you get into the older years with our products, um, they're a little bit more reflective, a, a little less sort of delight directed. You know, if you're talking about racism or slavery, how do you do that in a book club atmosphere? So I'm not saying that parties only have to feature, you know, balloons and streamers. This is the spirit of engagement, taking the experience deeper, allowing your kids to pause, to brood, to absorb what they're learning. That's what a party atmosphere helps them do. It sort of like makes all the stuff you're trying to teach stick. Make sense? So let me read you the list of the Quiver books in case you don't know what books they are. Here are the books in the Quiver of Arrows. They can be used in any order. There's no correct sequence, so feel free. Here it goes. Sarah, Plain and Tall, which is an amazing book. Makes me cry and I'm a grown up. The Trumpet of the Swan, one of our all time favorites. If you don't love the father in The Trumpet of the Swan, I can't help you. 
the mouse and the motorcycle, Beverly Cleary, she's the best. Charlotte's Web is our sample, and we have updated the sample so you can download a complete issue with a party in it right now and use that to get started. Young Fu of the Upper Yangtze. What the heck is Young Fu? Well, Young Fu of the Upper Yangtze River is simply this magical story of a boy in China in a time long ago. It's a little bit old fashioned in the style of writing. And so to me, it will benefit greatly from this party school idea. It will help your kids feel deeper, more deeply connected to the story. Secret of the Andes, oh, just even thinking about that book gives me chills. The writing is exquisite. Uh, Mr. Popper's Penguins, The Wheel on the School, and Cricket in Times Square, which of course, The Wheel on the School, let me back up for a moment. That is about storks making nests in houses in Holland. I mean, it's magical. Cricket in Times Square is delightful. And finally, House at Pooh Corner. To get the sample, use the link I put in the description and then scroll to the bottom of the page and you will see the word sample in one of the tabs, okay? So go to the quiver page where we sell the quiver arrows and simply click on the word sample at the bottom, okay? And you'll be able to get the Charlotte's Web sample. We hope many of you do. If you already purchased the quiver from us, not if you purchased it from a reseller, but if you purchased it from us, we sent an email this morning with our revised version, whether you bought an individual issue, bought it in a bundle, or bought it alone. So if you've already bought it, you don't have to buy it again. We give you a free upgrade, that's what Brave Writer does. But for those of you who have not purchased it yet, now is a great time. This product is just out of control, so powerful. And like I said, it can also bridge a variety of ages. Like you could have first, second, third, fourth, all working on it. If you have older kids, just go to the passage page and add a sentence or two if they need a bigger challenge, right? That's all you have to do. So don't think that you have to like do the quiver with the little guys and the arrow with the big guys and then you feel overwhelmed. Pick a program, aim for the middle, and use it for all your kids. We're gonna talk more about that at summer camp, by the way. So um, join me at summer camp, bravewriter.com slash camp. We'll get you there all free. It's in July. All right, any questions about the quiver before I hop off? I'm super excited that I got to share this with you today. Ah, oh, you guys are great. All right, let's see here. My son will be starting first grade, but was in a Spanish program for kinder in a public school. This fall, we will begin homeschooling. We'll be learning English, reading, and writing. Should I wait until next year to start this program? How about checking out the sample, Brenda, and see if it would be suitable for you? I think that would be really a good way for you to evaluate since I don't know his reading skills. Uh, July 23rd through the 25th is our summer camp, and I am doing a session on homeschooling multiple ages using our products. Will you get the update if you bought it from a reseller? No, you will not. You have to contact whoever you bought it from. They are the ones, we've sent our updates, so if they wanna share them with you, I hope they will, but we don't have control over that, yeah. Thank you for asking. Any others, any other questions? Oops, oh no, come back. <laughs> Just to clarify, the free upgrades will be emailed to us soon. They've already been emailed. We sent them out this morning. We bought the Quiver package last month. I saw today's announcing the upgrade, but did not see another email with the upgraded file. You should, you should have received it already. So contact help at bravewriter.com and we can do it manually if for some reason uh, you have a spam blocker that's not allowing it to come through. Help at bravewriter.com for all customer service issues around the free upgrade. Um, yeah, we, upda we updated them for free. Oh, <laughs> Christy. Well, the thing is, I just remember being a homeschooler. You make an investment. You don't want to feel like the new better thing is out and you have to pay for it all over again. That doesn't seem reasonable. I can't stand that. Um, for a kid who is not yet reading, use the wand. The wand teaches reading. The quiver is for children who know how to read. Uh, thinking I'm going to get the quiver for my almost seven-year-old and add in some arrows for my nine-year-old. He has read all those books already. You can. Here's my suggestion then. Alternate months or 
Make sure when you are doing the arrow or the quiver, you find a way to meaningfully involve the other. I find it challenging. Maybe you're a rock star mom and I'm just your garden variety mom, but I couldn't possibly have done the quiver and the arrow at the same time. So I either rotated back and forth month by month or week by week, or I tried to add uh, to a lower level product for my older kids or reduce from a higher level product for my younger kids. Does that make sense? Yep. Good, you have your updates, great. Is there a phonics program I recommend? I recommend rootedinlanguage.com. That's Rita Savasco, she will be at summer camp speaking about reading and language difficulties, learning disabilities. Uh, her whole program about phonics and spelling and language is brilliant. So I recommend her, rootedinlanguage.com. Um, Nothing has changed in Jot It Down or partnership writing, but if you bought the quiver in a bundle, it just automatically sends you everything again. So Jot It Down, partnership writing, the writer's jungle are all the same, but the quiver is the part of that product that was updated. Great question, Jennifer. Uh, I didn't even think to mention that, but that's correct. So you don't have to reprint anything, just keep what you have. <laughs> we know it's expensive. If you are inter, oh, let's see. Does the wand fully teach reading or should they have phonics down first? They need phonics first. So they need to know the letter to sound correspondence, just the basic ones. And they need to be reading things like hop on pop, consonant, vowel, consonant. Once they've got that down, then it's time for the wand. I hope that's clear. And in terms of like just a full on phonics program, you know, I used five different programs and I have five kids because it just never seemed like whatever I used worked for the next child. So I leave that up to you. You guys are the experts now. There are things available that I haven't reviewed or used and I don't feel comfortable recommending them sort of off the cuff, but uh, thanks for asking. And, uh, but Rooted in Language, Rita Savasco will have good recommendations. She, I would trust 100%. Anything else? Any other questions? Thanks for so many hopping on live. I really appreciate that. Uh, we're very excited about what's going on at Brave Writer right now, and we are looking forward to having all of you be in our orbit, you know, over the coming year. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please do. My Instagram account is at Julie Brave Writer, and I post lots of supportive stuff there every day. I'm debating between Quiver or Arrows for my nine-year-old. He's sensitive to the arrow books, uh, so the arrow books are more appropriate for him. Are language lessons complex enough appropriate for third to fourth grade? Oh, I think so. Oh, I definitely think so. We cycle through so many of the things again, right? Maybe look at the sample and just see if you think he could be enriched by it. That would be the way I'd do it. Um, yeah, choose five individual arrows for the nine-year-old. That's a great idea. You could easily do that. You could buy five arrows and five quiver arrows and rotate back and forth. The, the goal in Brave Rider is always tailor make, customize, think about your child, think about your personality. If you need help with that, you should join the Homeschool Alliance. July is our big planning month and we're in it right now. And I am helping parents think through these very dynamics so that they don't over purchase, don't over plan, and don't overburden their homeschools. We want peace and progress. Those are the two keys to a happy functioning homeschool. We don't wanna you know, front load all this curriculum, all this scheduling, and then feel behind and guilty and like we're not doing enough. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, Sean, Shatanya, there you go. <laughs> I love it. Um, so that's the way to always think about it. You wanna be in charge of your children's lives not let the programs you purchase determine how much energy you put in every day and if we allow our dollars you know our pocketbooks to determine we'll be focused all the time on how much guilt we feel that we're not getting our money's worth so buy less you know make a big list and then take it down two-thirds and then you might be about right i'm new to your program and have a great reader and beginning reader what program do you recommend i recommend a combination so for the one who's not a great reader, get a few quiver arrows. And for the one who's a great reader, get some regular arrows and see how that feels. Alternate months. Allow the younger one to just ride sidecar and listen to the story aloud when you're working on the arrow month. 
And then during the quiver of arrow month, maybe let your older child pick passages to copy from a book he's just enjoying for fun. This is what I mean, let's get creative. Let's figure out when to give focused attention and when to give some space for that more self-directed learning. We don't have to schedule so much stuff to prove that we're making progress. Does that sound right? I hope so, because I, I've seen it work. I've been doing this for a long time. The biggest mistake homeschoolers make at this time of year is scheduling, which sounds crazy because this feels like what you do when you plan. But scheduling is not how you become an effective homeschool parent. Planning is fabulous. Scheduling, not so much. Planning takes the child into account. Scheduling takes the curriculum into account. We start with your child and then we go to you and then we look at all your resources and figure out how to slot those in to meet those needs. That's how we do it in the Alliance. So if you're interested in that, go to bravewriter.com, scroll down to the Homeschool Alliance, sign up for our free trial, see if it fits. I'm doing a webinar tonight so you could get in on that if you signed up today. I have a third grader who reads at a fifth grade level. She is comfortable with copy work and she is needing a lot of support to write things down. Uh, creative writing, what would you recommend? Our support teacher uh, says to challenge her with partnership writing instead of jot it down. Okay, very interesting. So my perspective is different in this. I'm not always looking for challenge. What you wanna look for is the corresponding amount of support to meet a challenge. If it, I love what Rita says. Nobody learned to swim by drowning, right? We want to give just enough challenge with adequate support that the child feels powerful. Anything that feels like too big a step winds up being a disincentive to learning. Kids shut down, you know? So what we're trying to do is create for our kids, a context where they feel appropriately engaged, but have adequate support. For summer camp, if we can't make the live time for certain webinars, will they be available later? All webinars are live, and on the two days, it's all the same webinars, just in different time slots. So if you can't make one on one day, see if you can make it on the next day in the different time slot. Uh, that's, that's why I did it that way, because I know summer schedules are busy. Uh, I'm using loop scheduling because of that this year. I was going crazy with my schedule last year. Very good. I'm glad that's helpful. Oh, I'm so glad. Here, here's what we're gonna talk about tonight in the webinar. We're gonna talk about how planning becomes the seeds of inspiration. So think about that. Would love you to hear about that. It's important, important information, stuff that's gonna help you. The best thing we can do in this moment then is end with a look at this beautiful Mr. Popper's Penguins Quiver of Arrows. <laughs> if you are just joining me right at the end, we updated the look, we added book club party ideas to the guide so that you can host a fabulous book club for your youngest children. And we would love you to purchase the quiver if that's the right age group for you or an individual title if that's what you need. So feel free to go ahead and purchase, and uh, we will see you online. If you are interested in the Homeschool Alliance webinar tonight, you have to sign up for the Homeschool Alliance. BraveWriter.com slash homeschool dash alliance. Okay? See you.